Now that brings us into this idea of actually starting to look at different properties of matter and what they are and how they kind of work. Okay. So if we start to look at properties of matter, we have two different categories again. Okay, we have physical properties and chemical properties. So things that deal with the intermolecular forces or those chemical bonds. All right. Going through and naming some, physical ones always seem to be the easy one to do. Okay. It's like what's the color? Oh, it's green. Or is it hard? Is it soft? Is it stretchy and flexible? Is it malleable? Meaning, can you bend it and shape it? Um, is it... Um, I'm running out of ideas right now. Okay, So you get the idea, though, between what these physical properties are. Okay, uh, Can you scratch it with glass? Can you scratch it with a diamond? Those like hardness kind of stuff. So those are things that... Um, you probably did when you identified rocks and minerals back in earth science, okay? So those are your physical properties, okay? Tall, short, is it a square, is it a triangle? Those are all physical things, things that you can see, okay? Ultimately, if you can determine the property without messing with it, without changing it chemically, it's a physical property, okay? So if you want to know how hard something is, you can. We have tools to measure hardness. Now, when we're done measuring it, we may have put a dent in it, but we never changed the chemical. So that's a physical property. If you want to know what color it is, we just look at it and say, oh, look, it's blue. Okay. Chemical properties are a little different. When you have chemical properties, you have to actually change the substance to be able to see that property. Okay. So let's talk about flammability. Okay. So if something is flammable, okay, it means it can start on fire, it can burn. Okay. How do you test if something is flammable? Uh, you try to light it on fire, okay? Um, you can't just take a look at ethanol and say, oh, look, there's ethanol in a beaker. Is that flammable? I don't know. Well, how do you find out? Throw a match on it. If it, fly if it lights up, it's flammable, okay? Now, don't do that because it'll burst into flames and explode. But um, you get the idea. So to figure out a chemical property, you have to actually chemically change it, which means you ruin what you have or you change what you have, okay? Other ideas. Corrosiveness. How corrosive is something? Toxicity, how toxic is something, okay? So those are the kind of things that we look at in terms of our chemical properties. Now, we have properties which identify what something is, and then when you want to make a change to that property, we call those physical changes versus chemical changes, okay? So, for example, we could say that the physical property of, let's say, water in its solid state is it's, it's hard, it's cold, it's rigid, it's clear, so then if we go on to do a physical change for ice, we can melt it, okay? So when we melt it, it turns to a liquid, and then we can boil it, and it actually turns to a gas, okay? So those are our physical changes. Um, chemical changes are basically what we do when we are trying to figure out that chemical property, okay? Uh, so we are burning it. We are running electricity through it. We are corroding it. We are oxidizing it, um, those kind of things. Okay, as we do those. Now, if we take a look, when you identify a physical change, okay, the easiest way to do that is it does not change the composition of the substance. Okay, so it is still the same thing. A physical change has to be it was water before, it's water after, or it is ethanol before, it's ethanol after, or it's carbon dioxide before, it's carbon dioxide after. Okay, so we can't change the chemical makeup of it. It can break or change intermolecular forces. That's allowed. Okay, we can move those around or change them, but we can't change chemical bonds. Now, for chemical changes, that composition must be changed. Okay, so you have to change what it is. Okay, so if you have um, iron and iron rusts, let's say, okay, it's called oxidation. So when iron rusts, it changes from iron to a compound called iron three oxide. Okay, um, or ferric oxide. So you actually have chemically changed it. You brought it from being a single element into a compound with chemical bonds now. Okay. So when you do chemical changes, you have to change that composition. You have to break some chemical bonds, rearrange chemical bonds. You actually mess with those chemical bonds. Okay. Now, we're going to jump over here to the supplemental link real quick. Um, you guys have access to this also through our website. And this just kind of gives you just some more information on it. So physical changes, texture, color, temperature, shape. Physical properties, luster, malleability, drawn into a wire, it's called ductility. Density, viscosity, solubility. Here's one that's kind of tough because a lot of times people think that when you dissolve things into water, that that is actually um, chemical because it looks like it disappears, it looks like it's a chemical change. But in reality, solubility, um, being able to be dissolved is actually a physical property. And the reason why we know that is because 
if you um, dissolve something into water, let's say, and then you evaporate it back, well, whatever you dissolve comes back. Okay, so you, evaporation is a physical change, so dissolving has to be a physical change also. You can't use physical things to undo chemistry. Okay, um, that's one thing I always say is if it's a physical thing that undoes it, it was never chemistry in the first place. Okay, um, chemical changes, we see changes in temperature, color, odor, precipitates, bubbles, that kind of stuff. And you can f go down through this if you want a little bit more information or, or this is a little bit fuzzy for you. You can click on this link and get some more information on those different possibilities for that. Okay. Um, what we want to do is jump to our last piece of this of video and talk about how do we know if it's chemistry. Okay. So as we're working through this, how do I know that I have a chemical change? Okay. So um, what should I be looking for? First of all, I produce a gas. And so if you do a reaction and you start to make a gas from that, okay, a vapor comes off, a gas comes off, that's a good indicator of a chemical change. Now make a note, this is not boiling. Okay, so if you boil something, that's physical. So if you're just boiling something and creating water vapor, um, that's not chemistry. Okay, so this is creating a gas that's not part of heating it up and boiling it. A precipitate forming. Now precipitates are new to us probably. A precipitate, you know, it looks like it says precipitation almost in here. So a precipitate, what it is, is basically when you take two solutions, okay, and you pour them together so they're, they're in liquid form. Two solutions, you pour them together, and they make a solid, okay? So that actually happens, and we'll see it happen several times this year. You take two things that look like liquids, you pour them together, and from, from that, you actually create a solid inside like another solution. That's called a precipitate, or we say that it precipitates out, okay? That's a really quick indicator that chemistry is going on. A color change, okay? So as you watch this, something happen, you see a color change, good indicator. This is not painting or drawing or using crayons. It's like an actual color change inside the chemistry. A temperature change that it does by itself, okay? So we're not talking about a hot plate or a burner that warms things up, okay? You know, microwaving hot chocolate is not chemistry, okay? Microwaving is just warming something up. So if a, if a substance or something changes on its own, which means you, you put it together and it changes its own temperature without you doing anything, that's chemistry. Light being emitted. Anytime we see flames or light being let off, it's usually chemistry, okay? Um, and I love the last one. Any other distinct change in chemical or physical properties? It's like a catch-all, okay? So if you see a distinct difference between the start to the end of something um, that would indicate that you see a major change in these properties, you probably did something chemical to it, okay? Now, keep in mind, everything has some exceptions, okay? So use some common sense with this. So take the scenario that you're working under and say, okay, here's what's going on. Is this chemistry or not? Okay. And we'll have some more examples of this in class too as we talk about some more things. Okay. So those are our indicators of a chemical change. All right. So we're going to end the video here.